Hello and welcome to the start of a new series on the YouTube channel. I'm playing against J Mastermind 15, also known as Jeton. Jeton? Jitten? I don't know. In the Discord that I have, which you can join below if you want. I'm actually just going to change this graphic real quick. And I know that this guy, he said he plays the English, so it's going to be interesting. This is um essentially kind of a continuation of the Rapid Racing Climb series, which technically finished when we hit 2000 ELO. Um, but for you guys who are new, I basically just talk through my thought process while I play Rapid Games, and you guys can improve, and then I'll analyze it afterwards with the help of the computer. And we all learn a bunch of chess. Anyway, the series came to an end, essentially, when I hit 2000 ELO, like I said, and I thought, huh, why not play against one of my quite high-rated Discord members? Uh, he's actually been wanting to play some over-the-board tournaments, because he's also UK-based like me. So hopefully this can be some decent practice for him, and a good game for myself. So, anyway, while I've been waffling on, we've had a Slav defense and a free knight variation. So, you know, typically you would want to play knight c6 here, but it's a slav, so you've got a pawn on c6. You can take on c4 in many of these variations, but it's very difficult to defend this pawn unless you know a ton of theory involving moves like b5 to hang on to it, fighting against moves like a4, e4, opening up the bishop, and potentially trying to go e5. It's very difficult. I like to play this in a semi-slav structure, could I get the bishop out before I play e6? Absolutely. No no shadow of a doubt. However, I like to develop the bishop in a bit of a different way. So if my opponent goes for a move like e3, I'm going to continue developing with moves like bishop e7, castles, etc. Of course, he could develop this bishop first. Uh, but the point is, when this bishop moves, probably to d3, but maybe to e2, then we're going to take on c4, most likely. Force the bishop to capture on c4, and then play moves like b5 with tempo on the bishop, and then develop our bishop to b7. He goes g3, though. So he's going for more of a Catalan setup, and he's kind of trying to give up this pawn. The Catalan is such a difficult opening to play against, because often the c4 pawn gets given up, uh, but white has so much pressure down this diagonal. Moves like e4. I don't even think e4 gets played that much, to be honest. But, not going to lie, I don't know a ton of theory there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to develop normally. If he takes me, then we'll take back. Now, if I find an opportune moment, then I may take. But I'm not totally sold on it. It makes it difficult for us to develop like this, because our bishop could be exposed to his bishop, but if we go b6, he could trade as well, and then claim that our bishop will be terrible on b7. But our bishop will be terrible on d7 anyway. We could go for an e5 break, but I'm not a massive fan of it. Taking doesn't look awful it's just not the kind of style that I like to play in like a <laughs> I'm grabbing a pawn sure but it's going to be very difficult to hold on to it and if I try to play moves like b5 then c6 is going to become very weak and my opponent is no joke no joke so knight bd7 might be fine c5 might be a move Trying to go knight c6, which is trying to blast open the center. But then we could get left with an isolated pawn after like c5, take, 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 take. We could get left with an isolated pawn. But if we go c5 and he takes, we can probably take here first. But then knight takes. Wait. Sorry, if here, and then he takes there, we can take on c4, and I think we're good. 
but if c5 and he takes on d5, if we take on d4, then he can take with the knight and open his bishop up. We could take with the knight, though. And if he takes here... Wait, what do I mean? Hmm, let me calculate this, because I feel like it's a good time to strike and get our knight to c6 rather than d7. So c5... If take, then take, and we're good. If c5 and he takes on d5, if I take, then he takes with the knight and his bishop opens up. So knight takes d5. If knight takes d5, queen takes d5, knight e5 with a discovered attack on my queen, I can just play queen takes d4. So c5 takes, 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 takes. That looks fine. And if he doesn't take with the knight, so c5, cd5, knight d5, he could go e4. Take, take, take. We have a kind of Grunfeld type structure there. And I think the bishop belongs on this diagonal if we go for that setup. So I know I just spent a ton of time calculating, but I thought it was important to do that because I thought c5 could be a very good move if it works, but I don't think it works. So we're not going for it. My opponent keeps playing quickly though. So he's applying pressure. I mean, he's, he's a viewer of the channel, so... He knows that time pressure can be a problem for me. I might go b6, bishop, b7. Mm, that looks fine. We're controlling the four break. And if he takes, then we can just take. It's worth considering bishop a6. Just because there's a lot of things to look at. Bishop a6 and he trades, we have quite a nice diagonal. If we can play like bishop a6, rook c8, then uh, this bishop is not going to be that effective as well, because it's not got many targets. c5 also isn't playable, because we've got b6 on the board and control this square a bunch of times. So I like that move. Bishop to a6. So what I'm trying to argue is that his bishop on the light square diagonal isn't that good because the d5 square we control it so well and we block a lot of our opponent's play and this bishop's blocked because of his d4 pawn and if d5 remains steady then d4 will never move and then this bishop will remain bad so that's my game plan uh my game's lagging a bit fantastic don't know why that is um, he is offering a pawn here. If I take, take, take. Hmm, there's a lot of pressure on c6, though. And this diagonal opens up. So maybe it makes more sense to play rook c8. Yeah, the thing is, there's been, you know, a hanging pawn on c4 many times in this game so far. And maybe it's been good to take it. But like I said, it's really difficult to hang on to. And my opponent definitely knows these structures better than me. So I feel like it's quite risky to try and challenge him in them. <sighs> now I feel like I can take, though. Because where's this knight going? It can only go to a4 as a useful discovery. But I can just come to b5 or back to a6 and c6 is fine. I don't think I'm missing anything. I think I can just win a pawn. Okay, it looks scary. But e5, we just plop a knight on d5. And d5, we control a lot. I don't know whether that really works for him. We could just take on b3. Queen b3. C5? D5? Is 
It's getting complicated. Hmm. What about bishop b4? Mm, no. No, I don't like that. It pins the knight, but just a3. It is difficult for me to move right now, though. What if I go c5 immediately? Okay, like I said, e5, I just move the knight. That's cool. c5, d5 is my problem. So I need to keep this clamp. Let's take. Let's just secure my pawn up, and then we can try and fight. Because now we're up material. And he takes back with this pawn. Okay. That's unexpected. That's unexpected. I thought he was going to take with the queen. Maybe he wants to play a rook here. But I think I can just play bishop back. Put more control over d5. <clears throat> and I don't get skewered anymore on the a file. I can play a move like a6 uh, to secure this pawn. We are very cramped. Like White has a ton of space. His, p his piece placement is kind of perfect. A rook on an open file, queen and rook behind his central pawns. Two massive central pawns, putting a ton of pressure on my position. Knights, you know, controlling the center, bishops ready to open up. He's kind of got a picture-perfect position, but I'm up a pawn, and I'm very solid. I've got a very solid position here, so I just need to try and secure this pawn, basically. And I think a lot of it is going to be down to stopping d5. Because if c5 and he takes, fantastic. Absolutely perfect. But he doesn't have to take. If c5, he can push d5. And that's kind of scary. Right? If, um... You know, if e5 ever gets played, I just put a knight on d5. And then c5 is going to happen. I win. Like, I'm winning. But he's a good enough player, clearly, because he's he's playing very well, right? Like, this might not be the best way for him to have gone about this, giving me a pawn. I don't know whether that was the best, but he understands the dynamics of the position. He gives up a pawn because he wants massive counterplay, like, positionally, not tactically. He doesn't have tactical counterplay. My king isn't about to get mated or anything, right? But he has a lot of positional pressure because the way that his pieces are situated it's very very nice hmm something about that looks wrong to me I'll tell you why because now can I play c5 because if d5 takes takes can I take? Because it loses the support of the queen. Obviously, if c5 and he takes, like I said, I'm completely good. I'm absolutely great. c5, d5. Take, take, take. Can he give up a second pawn? Something like this, opening up an attack and threatening mate, I just take with the bishop. So c5, d5, take, 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 knight g5, take, take, his rook's hanging. c5 looks correct. c5 really does look correct. And if he can prove me wrong, then fair play, fair play. Um... I don't want to spend too long on this move because I'm down to 7 minutes, he's got 13, he's got a massive time advantage. I wouldn't be surprised if he spent like 4 minutes in this position, just checking things. Um, I'm kind of surprised at the speed that he has been playing. He spent quite a while on Queen c2. Maybe he just kind of like understood that he needed to get this kind of setup. There's a good chance he understands way more about the Catalan than I do. 
but I think it might be a good lesson in um, trying to combat an opening that you don't understand. I don't like I know the general ideas of the Catalan, but I don't play it. I rarely play against it. I rarely accept the pawn on c4, but he's been incredibly insistent on giving me the pawn. Something tells me that he left it like he left the pawn up for grabs a little bit too long because I feel like my position's very very solid at this point. And c5 I think might punish 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 <laughs> i've got a bit of um like like a slight yorkshire accent because my dad's from yorkshire so a few words of like a little northern twinge on them <laughs> um but anyway yeah i think c5 might punish queen c2 because the difference is if i Obviously, it's not my move, but if I were to play c5 in this position, then d5, and if I trade, I can't take the d-pawn again, because he has two defenders, I have two attackers, and that's a bit of a problem, because it's just a passed pawn deep in my territory. So, in this scenario, it no longer has the support of the queen. Now, his intention might have been to bring a rook over. So that he could support it with the rook rather than the queen. But I don't think he has time to. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Right, so he goes for d5. He goes for d5. And I think he has to go for d5, to be fair. Uh, because otherwise, like I said, if he takes, the dynamism in his position is kind of gone. So we're going to accept the pawn. Is e5 a move here? Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. Okay, I think we have to take. <clears throat> you could consider a move like bishop d6. But then why did we bother pushing c5 if not to exploit the d-pawn? Don't get me wrong, these open lines look kind of scary. But if we can get a move like bishop to f6 in to challenge this bishop, we should be okay. Knight d5, knight d5, bishop d5. What if he just goes rook here? Well, then we have bishop e6, and I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Very dangerous looking position though. Like, the position's opening up with two pawns up, sure. His pieces are definitely better situated than mine though. Like, no doubt. Um, hmm. Really? Does he want this? Does that work? Does that work? I think bishop e6 is a move that I have to play. Support the knight, block anything here. I need to keep monitoring the g5 square and I need to be able to put a bishop on f6 if I need to. Knight e5 though takes advantage of the fact that the knight is pinned to my queen. If I go bishop f6 in that position 
take, take, take. I can't take back with the queen because the rook takes knight and I go down a piece. So, hmm. If knight e5. Bishop f6, knight here, and I take. Then he takes the rook, so I can't do that either. So bishop f6 is not playable if knight e5. I think knight e5 is the move, because otherwise I'm going to go bishop f6. And my problems are kind of solved, I want to say. Uh, maybe not solved, but... Okay, knight e5, rook c7, guards the knight... Where is his knockout? He has no bishop c6 because my rook controls c6. If he went here to try and trade bishops, I think we can just take. Because if he takes my bishop, I might have knight f3. And if king g2 knight e1 and then if he takes my queen then i can take his queen that's very complicated <laughs> um but i think that might save us if we have knight e5 rook c7 bishop d5 bishop d5 the reason that i'm worried about it it's because after bishop takes bishop and rook takes bishop, there's still a lot of pressure on the knight. Um, although, I mean, I lose a guard of the knight because his bishop wasn't attacking my knight anyway. I do have two defenders and he has two attackers. The knight and the rook that will be on e5 and d5 and my rook on c7 and my queen on d8. But the problem is, I need to get bishop f6 in to block his bishop off, ideally. And the less defenders the knight has, the less viable it is for bishop f6 to be played. And then, like, bishop f6, his bishop takes f6, and my queen takes f6. Because then my queen will no longer be defending the knight. And if he has a knight on e5 and a rook on d5, that's a problem. Although... If I have a bishop on f6, then... And, then knight, and his knight is on e5, then the bishops won't be looking at each other. But when the knight takes on d7, then they will. He's spending his time wisely, I think. He's um He didn't use much time in the opening. But he's spending a whole lot of it now, because we've got some very critical positions. I think this is one of the most... Wow. I considered rook takes e6. I thought it... Well, I know it existed. I just didn't think it did anything. Because I don't see how he puts enough pressure on this knight. I mean, obviously I have to accept it. My rook also helps defend f6 now, which is useful. So bishop f6 is more playable. How do I defend that? It's a fair question. Hmm. Because when his queen goes to e6... He's going to be targeting a lot of things in my position. However, oh, I wanted to go knight f6, and if rook d8, I can take his queen. But if knight f6, he can take on here with check first, <clears throat> and then win my queen. That's a problem. Ooh, I do have bishop f6, though. And if queen e6, bishop f7 defends the knight. Sorry, rook f7 defends the knight. 
And if bishop takes f6, I will have to take with the pawn. But remember, we are up in exchange. And I'm preparing rook, sorry, queen to e8 to try and trade queens. Bishop f6. If he takes first, then we obviously defend, right? Bishop f6, queen e6, rook, e6, rook f7. And we are attacking his bishop, so he has to do something. If, I think this is quite a forcing line. Bishop f6, queen e6, rook f7. Bishop f6 makes the most sense to double my to like ruin my structure a bit. So bishop f6, g f6. Then he doesn't have knight e5. Even if he did, we have rook c7. Bishop f6 and knight e5 straight away. Then we can take. Bishop takes. Then we can play queen to maybe e8. I think that works. I think this works. I think the the point is that his pieces are very scary. Don't get me wrong, they're incredibly scary. But his bishop, I don't see how it influences the game that much. Unless landing on d5 is a big problem that I didn't realize. <laughs> very complicated. Very, very complicated. And my opponent is playing incredibly well, so hats off, Jeton. Oh, I didn't even see bishop h3. So if I take this bishop, then rook d7... Um, wait. Bishop takes bishop. Rook d7. Queen e8. How are you defending? Because remember, I'm up an exchange and a pawn. As it is. Bishop h3. If I win this bishop, then it's not a problem if I lose this knight. Oh, but if I take the bishop, what about... Knight g5 I just take with the queen, though. And if rook d7... <clears throat> I can always play a move like queen f6. I think I have to. I think I think I have to take that. I think I need to. Can't I just take? I really hope he's not about to sack all his pieces and beat me. <laughs> I really hope. I mean, I have to take. We are currently up a lot of material. <laughs> How do we defend this? If queen f6... Rook f7, if queen f7, then queen c8. If queen f6... Rook f7 and we take here. Bishop here. Rook here. Bishop d5. 
we're equal-ish material. We're up a pawn. But it's an opposite colour bishop endgame. I don't know if I can convert that. Hmm. Can I just go rook f8? If rook f8 then takes, takes, check there, check there, and I get mated on f8. So that doesn't work. Oh, he has bishop e6 there, and I lose the game. I lose my queen. Well, I, I just get checkmated. Wow. Holy. This guy. This guy. Oh my. Um. Maybe I don't have anything better. I don't think I do. I think it's probably just a drawn end game. Unless I'm somehow getting mated here. We're down on time, but we've defended this well. If it yeah, if we take here then he takes and we lose. So we have to take the queen. Fair play to him. This might just be a draw. After rook e7 discovered check, king f8, we could just repeat. So otherwise he has to move the bishop. I don't know if he can push for a win here. <clears throat> I'm not sure. But wow, what an attack. What an attack from our opponent. It didn't result in checkmate. There might be a way for him to win some material here. Not my bishop, because his rook can't get any kind of discovery on my bishop because of its placement. I don't see how he wins my rook in any way. Um, his best course of action might just be to go for a repetition. But wow. <laughs> like, Jeetan, bro, you were worried about, like, playing classical tournaments? You're going to do insane. Playing chess like this, like, bro, you're going to tear up, for real. Like, you, you have no idea. And you're going to come up with some crazy stuff with the amount of time that you're going to have on the clock. Like, you got you to gotta make sure you share your games when you play, because I'm looking forward to seeing it, bro. Anyway, Jeetan is in my chess Discord, so, like I said, join below if you fancy. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, this video will be added to a playlist with all my Slav games in it. Uh, so all my games that I play in the Slav defense, this video will be added to it. So check that out if you want. Oh, if I go here, then he has this, and then I lose my rook. Wow. I think I just have to go to h8 then. And give up a7. Damn, he keeps finding good moves. Jeez. I want to go bishop to a5 to hold my queenside pawns together. I should be able to draw this. We're equal material. His piece is a bit more active than mine, but my king, I think, is a lot safer now. It's, I mean, it's a luft. I mean, like, his bishop can obviously control the h7 square, but at least it's something. Mm. He's definitely the one pressing. Let's just harass his bishop a bit. Because realistically, I'm the one holding on to a draw here. He's the one trying to push. Because my bishop is defending, but it's also kind of out of the game. Whereas his rook is applying not only pressure to the pawn that's keeping my bishop pinned down, but also putting pressure on my king and the pawns around my king. But they are on dark squares, which is going to be difficult for him to actually exploit.
I'm going to give a check. Because I control d3. Which is the only square his bishop can use to check me on h7. Because my, my idea was king h3 and he can't move his king because h2 falls. But now if I take h2, bishop d3, and this is a mating threat. That looks really scary. Stop finding good moves, bro. I'm going to go back. I'm actually really terrified of that. God damn. He keeps playing insane moves. King f3 is a great find. Really is. I was fully expecting king h3. Okay. Do I want to play this? No, then he goes f5. I'm kind of in Zugzwang, you know. It's really impossible for me to move right now. Because these are all frozen. All oh, these are frozen. Only my bishop, only my rook can really move. Okay, let's try and stop f6. If I can trade the rooks, this is a draw. But he's not going to allow that. I know he can give this check, and then give this check, and then you get a discovery with his bishop. Oh no, I blundered. I don't. F he didn't notice though. I think I blundered. We'll check back in the game analysis, but I'm sure I just blundered an exchange. Oh my god. <clears throat> I'm getting kind of suffocated here. I might have to give this pawn up under the right circumstances. I don't want to though. He split his pawns on the king side, which is going to make it difficult for him to make a dangerous pawn though. And whenever he goes king g5, we can always give him a check. Although previously after king g5, bishop d2, king g6, we had rook f6. But here if he goes h6, we can just give him the check. And I'm happy to give b6 up if we win h6. Um, and now this works. Check. Okay. I just realized our rook defends this. I really hope I'm not blundering. Should be good if we keep things on the dart squares. Okay, now the rook no longer defends that. But let's just give a check. Force the king away a bit. <sighs> Unrelenting pressure from my opponent. Fair play. I feel like I'm gonna. I feel like I've said that so many times this video. But Jeetan, bro, you're playing incredibly. This should be a draw though. H6 we take with the rook. Or the king. Our rook's kind of in jail, but it's also holding down the king side very well. I don't know what his rook can really target. Does he want to move the bishop and put the rook on e6? Maybe. I'm just going to line this up to scare him. I don't know if there's any tactics there. Like, obviously c4, 
and then maybe trying to push through or take but I don't know if it actually works I'm just doing it as a scare tactic I should be fine I don't want to start pushing because I need to keep the pawns defended I'm going to put the bishop here just to help out here because on rook b8 I always want to have bishop a5 available. I don't want rook b8 to come when my bishop is on a5 already because he might put me in a zugzwang. This position could come down to a zugzwang. Are we repeating? He wants rook h8. I know you want rook h8 but I'm not giving it to you. No way. Is he gonna he can't do it like that either, so that's good. What's he doing now? <laughs> Bro, bro's scaring me. Where's he going? Is he trying to go rook D seven so that he can do this? Wait, here here I can't take because of this. Am I getting mated? I think I'm getting mated. I think I'm getting mated, guys. Oh my. Wait, if he goes here... Is he missing? I'm sure there's a mate. But if he goes back, I'm sure it's going to be a repetition of some kind. Oh, I can't give this check, though. That was his idea. I have no moves. I feel like I'm... Yeah. Well done. Well done to my opponent. Wow. This should just be game over. <laughs> Damn. Very nice. <laughs> it's frustrating. Because if this wasn't mate somehow, I'd... <laughs> oh my god. Wow. What a game. What a game. Congratulations, bro. That was really well played. Um, I'll drop you a message before I get into the analysis, but... Man, you are ready for classical chess. Jeez. Absolutely destroyed me there. Well... That was an insane game. Game review gives Jeton, my opponent, 79.4% accuracy, and myself 70.9. Blunders and mistakes everywhere from both of us. <laughs> this is like one of the most insane games I think I've played in quite a while. The opening, we have a Catalan. Um, well, we transpose into a Catalan like this. Uh, White doesn't have to play it like this, of course, but he does. And, um, you know, in this kind of position, the computer prefers black to take here. But it's so scary. Even moves like knight e5 straight away, just targeting the pawn. If you try and hold on with, like, b5, like, bishop g2, this looks horrible to me. Um, and I don't know these positions. Like I said, it's going to be pretty foolish of me try and play these positions with no knowledge. Um, Jeton clearly knew them though. We had bishop b7, bishop g2, castles, castles, knight bd7, b3. I was a bit confused by b3, but it's a book move apparently, and Jeton knew it. b6, okay. I'm playing normal moves, which is good to know. This is all theory by the looks of it, and I had no idea, but I think bishop a6 made more sense than bishop b7, and the computer agrees with me, because we've got a lot of targets to aim at. 
Rook C1 was an inaccuracy, so we should have taken straight away. Why didn't I do that? I think I was a little bit worried about moves like knight e5 or knight e2. They just win the pawn back straight away. So I was a little bit concerned about this. Maybe I shouldn't have been though. I chose rook c8. He went rook to e1, which is a mistake because we take. He goes e4, we take on b3. So this is all right. It should be seven is best. Queen c2. C5 is fine. It's not great though. So it's better to play bishop b4. No? B? So the computer's having a fit right now. <laughs> I'm going to let it sort itself out. A5? B5? Rookie A? Okay, Rookie A I can see, but B5 or A5? What on earth? C5 made sense to me. He pushed, we took, he took, takes, 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 puncher takes, rook cd1, and bishop e6 is the blunder. So I needed to take on f3. Then go he, wait, what? And if he takes? Oh, and the bishop hangs, and this is good for me. Mm, I miss that the bishop would be hanging at the end of that line. The I4, I would just be losing a piece because I didn't notice this in my calculation. So bishop e6 is a fine move, except for rook e6. And uh, Jeton, my opponent, actually just sent me a message after the game saying that he saw this kind of sacrifice in, um, oh, what was it, Karpov versus Botvinnik? Apparently he saw this, so bro, what a move. Rook e6. Queen e4 is a mistake though. Knight e5 is better, and after rook c7, bishop h3, and it's best for me to sack my queen. But if I try to defend, then moves like queen c4, queen e4. I guess I just can't move. So queen e4 is a mistake. Uh, a mistake. I play bishop f6. Queen takes e6 check is a mistake though, so he should have taken. But I thought after rook f6 I was good. Knight e5 attacks my knight. Rook c7 defends my knight. And the only winning move... Ah. I just can't defend. If I go rook f7, take, take... What? And this. Dude. These moves, man. Some of these moves. This is this is peak Catalan. Like, it really is peak Catalan. He didn't see that, though. He goes queen e7, rook f7, bishop h3. We're playing fine. By the way, he just... Oh, no. I think this double piece sacrifice is what he was mentioning with the Botvinnik Karpov game. So he finds this, rook d7, queen f6, and here I can't take that, because queen c8, if here and we trade, then I'm good, right? But he can go bishop e6 check first, and then I get mated. So I had to take the queen. Bishop e6, rook e8 is the only move, because if we don't play that, um, if we play that rook to d8, then rook d7 check and I lose my rook. Because my rook's under attack from the bishop on, like, c8. So I need to attack the bishop. I thought he was going to go for this. But he chose bishop d5. I went king h8, rook a7. Apparently I could have played a5. Oh. Here? Here? Okay, well, it's the same, same sort of scenario, really, then. Except my king's a bit closer to the center. This was a very passive position, though. My bishop's probably better on d4. Just give up b6 and to get more activity. 
This pawn's going nowhere. I'm down a pawn, but it's opposite colored bishops. Rook f8, you can't even defend this. <laughs> Except for bishop f7, and I can't take because of mate. But g5, bishop b7. These are weird moves anyway to be finding. Realistically, something like this would probably happen. And this is a dead draw. Dead draw. But I go bishop a5. My opponent keeps advancing, so he does well. And by the way, king f3 was a nice move. I was expecting king h3. So I defend this, uh, which would cover h7. And I keep an eye on h2, so the king will struggle to move because I'll take h2. But my king is so weak. And, I mean, that showed when we got mated, right? King f3, rook d8, g4. Um, this... Oh yeah, this is, I think I saw this, and I'd have to give up my rook for the bishop, but... Yeah, rook f6. I think he basically just struggled to actually find this mate. We're both making mistakes because there's such low time. But eventually, he found the mate in Gaidea. And yeah, I don't see how I could have defended myself. It, it's game over, really. There's no way to defend myself. And like I say, eventually he finds it. And uh, we get mated. Fair play, Jeton. Very, very well played. If you want a chance to play me um, as a continuation of the series, make sure you join the Discord. Well played, bro. Um, we'll have to have a rematch at some time. And I'm going to have the white pieces um, as a revenge. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you've made it till the end, please drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.